Hey guys, I've had this Motorola G7 for like three years. It's been a great phone, I like it a lot. But one day it developed a little bit of a crack on the side where the screen started to come out and I thought that was weird. So I thought maybe I just bent it or something and that caused the screen to come out. So I just glued it back together and ignored it. And uh, then it happened again. I figured, oh gosh, I must've sat on it again or something. And then just yesterday, that thing popped with a bigger bulge than I've ever seen. And I looked inside and I said, that battery in there looks a little bit larger than it should. In fact, even if I squash this whole, the, the whole screen down on this thing, that battery is not gonna fit back in there. It's sticking out beyond the screen. Well, something is, something's way wrong here. Batteries shouldn't look like that. Well, it turns out that's what happens to batteries when they sit on the charger for too long. Uh, I have that thing sitting there charging a lot. It hits 100%, should stay there, it should be fine, right? So I'm blaming the engineers for this. I am an electrical engineer. This is not supposed to happen. This is the reason why you've got these boxes that say lithium batteries not allowed on passenger aircraft. That should never happen. When this battery hits 100% charge, that charger should shut off charging the battery. End of story. But some reason it doesn't, and as a result, my phone is split in half. And I cannot close it. And it'll probably burst into flames at some point. It still works fine, the charge is fantastic on it, but uh, it's now a dangerous phone. It could explode at any time. So, I bought a replacement battery here, and I'm gonna show you how to replace it and for 20 bucks, get this thing back up and running again. So this nice little kit comes with a bag of tools, which turns out to be pretty useful right now because uh, this, particular, uh, this particular tool is the one that I need to remove uh, a cover that is protecting the uh, connectors. And so that's good. And it also came with a screen puller tool, uh, which I don't need because my battery popped off on the screen side. So my screen is already Popped open. Don't need, don't need the puller on that. Was glad to see that it came with some kind of adhesive. This is definitely not cut to the shape of my screen, so I'm gonna have to cut little thin strips of this and place it around the screen so I can stick it back down. But that's, you know, it's good enough. And the battery. Uh, this is not a Motorola brand battery. If you want a Motorola brand battery, you have to buy it from a authorized dealer. And therefore it costs twice as much and it's more of a pain to probably try to sell you other stuff too. So I just bought this one off Amazon. Of course, made in China, but so is the Motorola one. So you can't win there. All right, I've never done this before, so let's see how lucky I get here. So right inside here are the two screws that I have to release. Take this cover off. I probably should have tweezers out here with me, but I forgot them. Three screws, three screws to loosen. Now this is a little trickier for me because I already glued the screen back on once and I've got some glue bleeding through here. So I, it's a little tough to get this piece out because of, there's a, because of a little bit of glue on it. Comes with a uh, guitar pick thing. I don't know what that's for. <laughs> And then we have to pop this little one up. Okay, now the battery is theoretically free, but it's still got some glue in here. This little piece goes to my camera, so I gotta slide that back over the camera. It's hard to see where this is held down. So with the help of a long, thin plastic piece here, it didn't come with the kit, I actually wish it was twice as long, you really have to push between the battery and the adhesive here. The, the temptation when you're lifting this battery up is to just lift from one end, but it's so strongly adhered in the middle, you're gonna risk bending this battery in half. And if you do that, 
you really risk setting this thing on fire. So you gotta be super careful uh, removing this battery and just slowly take your time wedging something under it to push that whole adhesive free. I used some uh, standard just rubbing alcohol here to, to drip onto it to help kind of push this through the middle here. But I think I did this without breaking anything. And so now we just need to put the new battery in. It's clean on the back here. And uh, I should probably dry some of the isopropanol in here just to make it a little bit easier. But it's going to sit there like that. We snap the connector in place, screw this cover back on, and uh, then take off the old adhesive around the edges here. Uh, and then plug the phone in to charge it. Actually, I should probably turn it on and see uh, this battery. New battery probably has some charge to it already. That is the plan here. All right, well, as you can see, this thing is working again and fantastic, awesome. Battery's only at like 9%, so it's, uh, it's not doing too well. I'll have to charge it up here, but the phone is working and it looks pretty much just like it always did, nice and thin again. Uh, should be good, good to go now. So yeah, this old battery, man, not looking so good. I'm gonna have to put that in a safe place. Don't want it to catch on fire while you're asleep. So uh, this should be good to go. Awesome. Okay, so we've got our bad battery that we would like to salvage lithium from. Uh, I've got some sand here in case things get out of control and something starts burning. We throw it right in here and we dump a bunch of sand on top. So we better open that up. And then we take it outside until it finishes burning. Bunch of gloves because these are incredibly caustic substances in these batteries. You do not want to touch lithium with your bare hand. It will burn you very quickly. I've got a little jar here that uh, is nice and clean. My hope is that if I get the lithium in here, I can fill it with some low oxygen mineral oil from United Nuclear and therefore I can save my lithium. We'll see. Uh, now, if I've got my chemistry right, I should be able to get, uh, I should be able to tell which side is lithium and which side is the other side because the lithium should be the negative one if I've got that correct. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I've got a couple of tools here. So let's, uh, let's get started and see what we find. Now this is all swollen because of gas in there and uh, the gas is what's really doing most of the damage here. Should be doing this in a well-ventilated area. Do not do this at home. This is extremely dangerous if you don't have the right tools. Oh, that's scary right there. There's a lot of layers in here, so this thing is likely to be very difficult to disassemble safely. You can just barely see metals in here and, and a, black, uh, a black counter layer here, so it is very thin, paper thin layers of lithium in here, which I'd like to save, but now they're oxidizing in the air, and uh, that's a potential problem too. I probably should have run this battery down until it was dead before I opened this pack, but then if you do that, the lithium is all oxidized, and so it's not really cool lithium anymore. I'm not really sure what to do at this point because it just rained outside and the humidity is unbelievable, and I know if I take this outside, this will start a crazy reaction because lithium and water like, like to make fire. But here we go. This is, this is some scary stuff not warming up yet, which is good. Although I do think there might be a bit of heat at the top here, which is a bad sign. You can see that the battery is actually bent here due to the stresses, and that is definitely not good for a battery. <laughs> it 
It's actually scary how delicate these batteries are. Oh boy, there we go again. Oh, I guess I'm shorting this out, that's why I'm getting sparks. Simple tape inside holding things together. Okay, here we are. We're finally getting down to some materials. So this black stuff is going to be your anode, I believe. Uh, anode side of the reaction. Then on the other side of the thin paper is going to be the lithium stuff. But this is. Uh, I feel like I'm disassembling a bomb here. It's kind of dangerous. Proper material uh, identification would be good here. I don't know if this is actually a piece of lithium or not. Uh, the other thing to note is lithium is extremely lightweight, so if I was able to get it in here and fill it with mineral oil, it's actually going to float right on top of that mineral oil and re keep reacting with the air inside the jar. So this is quite a difficult task here, actually. To now I have peeled a little bit more off here, and I see the yellow here, which I believe is the lithium, and it's a really, really, really thin coating on top of this copper piece in here on both sides, and that is your counter electrode there. And the question is, what do you even do with that? I don't know. <laughs> it's so thin I can't scrape it off and put it into a, a container. It'll, it'll oxidize the whole way. Uh, I suppose I could just leave it there, and if the price of lithium ever goes up, it's already half refined here, so maybe that's uh, the best option. But it's starting to blacken now that it's exposed to air. And if I peel this back more, you can see where it's not blackened. So I believe that that yellow stuff there is actually the very, very thin lithium uh, sheet. So it did occur to me that I have a tank of argon, which I bought on Amazon. I'll check the link in the description below about that. Uh, and so I'm just filling this bag with argon a couple times to try to purge out the air. Purge out the oxygen in the water. And that way, uh, hopefully, it will prevent it from burning while it's sitting in this bag. 